In today's episode, we're going to discuss the movie Cherry 2000 and how it could actually represent what our future could look like with sex bots. And welcome back, everyone. <laughs> welcome back to another show talking about sex bots. <laughs> This is going to be an interesting <laughs> conversation, let me tell you right now, people. Okay. So Jason wanted to watch this movie that I, I'm pretty sure I've seen previously, but it's it's an old movie. It's done in the 80s. It's 1988. And I've got the synopsis here, which I am going to read out for everyone. So let's see. In the post-apocalyptic California of 2017, mind you, this movie was done in the 80s. So for them, 2017 is a long future away. Sam Treadwell, played by David Andrews, manages a recycling plant. His companion is a Cherry 2000 who is played by Pamela Gidley, a lifelike robot who caters to his every need. When Cherry expires, Treadwell refuses to settle for a newer, less attractive robot. Salvaging the chip containing her personality, he hires a tracker, E. Johnson, played by Melanie Griffith, to lead him through the lawless desert zone where a replacement Cherry 2000 model can be found. And for us here in Australia, the release date is 12, the 12th of November 1987. The budget was ten million, and the box office was only fourteen thousand. I can't believe they only made fourteen thousand dollars on this show. What I a great show! I can't believe they spent ten million on it. What a, an amazing movie! <laughs> Anybody who hasn't watched this movie is missed out. <laughs> so it was Jason's idea to watch this movie. Yeah. Because why did you want to watch this movie in the first place? Because I'm keeping up with all the technology and all the things that are happening with robots mm. and how fast it's progressing. Mm. And Elon Musk has got the best bots out there and they're going to take over the world. And then I was coming across different feeds on YouTube with people making creating companion bots mm. and they, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and i really do understand why so i just had the film in my head because i watched it a while ago mm. like years ago and i thought well that's really interesting how this particular movie and there's been a few along the way but this is one of the one of the first type movies mm. and i thought geez it's we're really stepping into that territory faster than not. Mm. And I thought, oh, well, let's just watch the movie and do a chat on it and compare it to what was happening within the movie to what's happening playing out today. Because there's a lot going on behind the scenes of AI. Yeah. And it's getting, my understanding, it's, it's going to get harder and harder for people to meet and have that human intimacy mm. because you've got like they don't want everybody to be at home on their bloody apple head devices <laughs> vr devices and connect that way yeah and i feel like people are getting a bit more pickier mm. as well because there's everybody's getting programmed to be less connected and more separated. Mm. And I really do believe that in the future, not now, because we're in 2023 now, mm. in a few years, five years, I don't know, but things are happening really quick. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a, a mass production of, say, sex bots next year. That's mm. how fast things are happening. Mm. And I just thought it'd be an interesting topic to talk about because we're really on the, on the doorstep of that movie in a way playing out today yeah and that's the reason why okay yeah cool because i feel it's really sad how we're going to be missing out on that human connection 
intimacy mm. with each other. Mm. It doesn't matter if you're male, male, female, female. It doesn't matter about that. It's that human connection, that heart openness, that connection with each other, which I believe it's it's definitely gonna be a big challenge. And I was told on channeling when I was a young guy in the class, in my class, and the channel said that there will be so many people who will be alone mm. and not in a, a marriage or a partnership or a relationship with each other. There'll be so many single people out there and that will open up the floodgates for these programmers and people that build bots mm. for companionship. Because as a human collective, human race, as a human being, we need that connection with uh, with <laughs> with each other and I was just thinking about the other day because I was thinking about this last week and I formed a connection with my car mm, yes you know and you've got a new car yeah and you've formed a love connection not in love with the car but you love the car it's like we need to connect to connect with everything mm. be emotionally connected with everything regardless of machine or each other mm. so that's yeah that's the reason why going from the channeling where it says a lot of people will be alone and single why do you feel that people could be alone and single if instead of just making a connection do you do you feel like it could be because of the programming that is happening now with getting everyone to stay at home well let's start the dating apps not a lot of people will go to the pub or disco or out mm. a lot compared to when I was younger. Mm. I mean, all the time I was at nightclubs, yeah. you know, meeting people, interacting. Now you're doing it on platforms, apps, dating websites more than ever before. Mm. And because of the what's played out last three years with the pandemic, I mean, everybody was in lockdown mm. and they said that the porn industry went through the roof mm. during that time because mm. people were just really needing that connection. Yep. So if, and there's talk now that there's going to be other who has playing out and other lockdowns playing out in the future. Mm. I can understand why if a manufacturer was able to produce something like a Cherry 2000, mm. not that they will right now, every man and his dog would be getting one of those for companionship. Do you feel like it's mainly the men that they are aiming it at? Not necessarily the Cherry 2000 in the movie, but generally sex bots. Well, they're going to be a big seller. Because it's interesting from my perspective and what I have, I haven't seen a lot of information about it, but what I have noticed is that they aim it more towards men and men who find it maybe difficult, who don't maybe have social cues mm. or feel uncomfortable around women because they might be scared of being rejected because they might feel different or odd. That's what I feel like they're aimed at. It's more aimed at men than it is at women. Mm. I need to be careful here because I don't want like a thousand million women having a go at me here. No, no, no. Um, no, I understand. But that's just coming from my own perception where it fit that's where i feel like it's aimed at and i no disrespect to any any male or no, no, female no. but that's where like that's from what i've seen that's where i feel like it's headed there's a lot to say about this there's okay can sorry can i cut in in the movie the in, what i found interesting is that there are clubs where you can go meet real women Mm. So in the movie, it portrays that having a robot or a companion robot is natural. Yeah. And having a companion with a real female is not natural anymore. Because they made the females in the movie to be um, head... You could have said it in a different way. <laughs> but if you watch the but movie... That's true. It's true. The guys want it tenderness. They want it companionship. They want it... They want it connection... The women have got their lawyers next to them. Unfortunately, <laughs> it is true in this movie that the women mentally are not quite right. No. No. And I, I thought I might bring that up because that might lead you, in, might help you to try and explain. Yeah, no, keep going that tangent because yeah. 
Yeah, I forgot about that part of the movie because mm. it's been a, a while since I watched it. They had their lawyers. They did. And signing contracts and documents. And they had a chip they put into a computer yeah. that showed them their stuff. Yeah. Or it, how magnificent they were. And that dictated what kind of contract they could get Yeah, written that, up. There was one scene where the main character, he didn't want to go, the main actor, he didn't want to go, but his friends persuaded him to go to this nightclub where you can meet real females. And as he's just sitting, standing by the bar, he's having a drink, this female comes up to him, puts some kind of card in the screen hmm. and shows him an image of her and another guy going at it and then expects the other the main actor to put his card in. And that I didn't quite understand it because she got angry that he wouldn't show her his card, which... Never, I didn't really quite understand. See it as a resume. Oh, I see. So, oh, okay. If you look at it that way, it's, and may sound really strange what we're talking about, but yeah, okay. It's kind of like, this is what I can do. Mm. Now show me what you can do kind yeah. of thing. And then we'll see if we're a compatible match. That makes more sense. And if it is, I'll get my lawyer that's just waiting to come in and do a, do some contracts and what you can and can't do to me or yeah. vice versa and how long it, it's going to be for. Exactly. Because in another part of the nightclub scene, one of the main actor's friends, male, was standing there at a table with a female and then they had, I think it was Lawrence Fishburne actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think he was in it. And he's, Lawrence Fishburne is standing there with a typewriter or a computer or whatever, typing up exactly step by step of how the night would play out for them step by step dinner a night over yeah it was and and that was when she's like no nah, i need my lawyer to have a look at this yeah i know i was like and he's like baby can we just wing it and just be natural and just go with the flow no i need my bloody lawyer mate and Unfortunately, it did make females look crazy. Mm. It did. Because they're all the same in this particular movie. Yeah. So it makes it makes sense as to why a lot of men would go for, let's say, a Cherry 2000 because the Cherry 2000 was very tender, was very caring, was very nurturing, even though she was a robot. Mm. Mm. And they did a great job to portray how much of a human she looked yeah like she looked like attractive yeah like walking running like everything because like, in the in the movie she was human yeah <laughs> she is actually but she's just playing a robot yeah but just imagine if they get to that caliber of or level of that but if you look at it it's reality but if you think of uh, Battlestar Galactica in Battlestar Galactica, they, the robots got to, or the Cylons got to a level where they're actually made biotech humans. Mm. And they were real. They would bleed, but their internals were all machine. robot machine. Yeah. So it's not, it's not an impossible scenario to play out. No, and they were able to give... Birth. Yeah, they were able to have children as well, yeah. which no one actually thought that they could. Yeah. Yeah. So that's stepping them into more of the human arena. Yeah. The interesting I found this movie very interesting. It was quirky. It was it was very quirky, but the reason why I wanted to bring it up and to watch the movie and talk about it is because of what you've researched i'm getting a bit tongue-tied here <laughs> because of what you researched and because of what you've seen and because of how everything is playing out in our reality as well and how fast like you said mm. ai is approaching mm -hmm. and possibly how fast as you said if humanity isn't careful they're going to end up being alone and something similar playing out like that maybe yeah Yes, that's why I just had the feeling just to talk about this and put it out there for people to, if they can, try to keep connected. I think, there's, have you noticed there's always been a theme with our... Connection. It's always, yeah, it's always there's always been a theme with majority of the chats that we have. 
And every time we bring up AI, it's always been about connection mm. and the human connection. Yeah. And how AI doesn't quite understand that. No, because it's doesn't have the programming but it it, I, it will yeah in the movie cherry 2000 they she did have the programming of connection yeah mm. connection love romance touch everything and the interesting thing about it in the movie is in the start of the movie you see the relationship between the robot cherry 2000 and the male and then as the movie progresses you kind of it changes as well from the end of the movie Mm -hmm. where she literally has a blank face do you remember in the plane yeah yeah and she's in the back yeah nobody home yeah literally no one home as opposed to in the beginning of the movie where she's made to look very someone as home yeah very attentive that's true and then at the end of the movie completely blank yeah, and he used the same chip. And he used the same chip. Mm. Yeah. So I, I just realised that then. It's very interesting how he progressed in his life trying to find a new cherry model and meeting a female, a real female tracker, like a real female, and having to go on the journey with her, how much he has progressed from a Cherry 2000 up until the end of the movie. To a real girl. Yeah. It's a bit like Pinocchio. (laughs) I'm a real boy. To give everyone just a quick rundown of what we're explaining in the movie. So the main character starts off with a robot, a Cherry 2000, goes on a journey with a real human who's a tracker Mm. and ends up with, and decides to end up with a real human in Mm. the end. Yeah. And that I think that was actually the real awesome part about it is he realises, actually, this Cherry 2000 has no personality whatsoever. Oh, because the tracker, what was her name? Melanie Griffith. No, the tracker. E. E. Johnson. E. Johnson. E. Johnson. E. Johnson. (laughs) So she was boisterous and Fiery red hair. Red hair, sassy. Full of personality. An action female hero. Yeah. Could do anything and everything, you know, down to somersaulting across cars and <laughs> jumping out. Like, she could just do it all. And she was a real woman. Yeah. And he's like, wow. Mm-hmm. Where this Cherry 2000 was little, petite, and he had to drag her around and it was, you know what I mean? More like a toy in a way. But I'm just going back to the movie it's interesting because he had to go to a place called Glory Hole. Mm, that's right. That was outside of where he lived. Which was a city. Which was a main city. Yeah. So in that regard, if you ever watch the movie, which we do highly recommend, if you can get past the whole 80s you know, thing about it, the females, I guess, in the smaller towns are probably not as loopy Mm. as the females in the bigger towns. Mm. That's what I understood. Mm, Not as much, but still. Yeah. I don't know if it's a California thing. (laughs) People bag California. Too much sunshine. (laughs) People like, I'm getting out of this town. This is crap. I don't know. I don't live there. I'm in Australia. But I listen to all these Americans. It's like, Getting out of California. And it's funny how they did it there. I oh, know, right? I oh, know. Did I, did I sound okay? Because I felt like I was trying to explain something and I didn't know how to word it. Because I, I think you're a bit flustered with trying to express this. Because yeah. <laughs> it was just such a weird movie. Yeah. And I think it's great that there's a female, because you're a girl, you're female. Thanks, baby. Not a bot. <laughs> I think you get to express... Your perception of the movie. Yeah. So, you know, you get couples watching it. You know, the girl's going to go, well, what did Alison say? <laughs> what does she think about the movie? Well, we know all blokes want a Cherry 2000 because that's what... I'm going to be really honest. Men, a lot of men want like an easy, cruisy, intimate relationship mm. without the head staff and mm. 
without, you know, geez, Frank, put out the bloody garbage, mate, you know. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, they they want that more of an easy, cruisy... Cause our, less high maintenance. Less, Yeah, less high maintenance. And what I was trying to say before, that we've become more pickier with each other as well. Yeah. And because I've been in the new age sector for a really long time, and I, I've dated a lot of spiritual new age girls, mm. they all want a man that's strong, attractive, soft, nurturing, humble, powerful, psychic, I mean, the list, the list goes on. So pretty much all females in the new age sector want someone like them and a masculine at the, and a man at the same time. Yes. Someone who's nurturing but also strong. Someone who is caring but also, well, not the opposite of caring, but, you know, uh, I'm not entirely too sure what the opposite of caring is. Communication, massive amount of communication because... And not really into sport. Well, yeah, well... If you hear in, say, Victoria, everybody's mad about cricket and football and soccer. and But a lot of the new age females are wanting someone who they can connect with on... Do yoga with. <laughs> Baby, we don't do yoga. No, but I'm just <laughs> saying that there's, this is my past, by the way. <laughs> so I've done my fair share of yoga. <laughs> the girlfriend's going, well, Sunday morning, Jason, we're going to do some <laughs> yoga. Okay, so Jason... Is a very lucky man because if I want to do yoga, I'll do yoga by myself. Yeah, you don't tear me down on the floor. Okay, mate, it's time to do some yoga. <laughs> Could you imagine? If I... <laughs> and I don't do, okay, love, we're going to watch uh, the football tonight. Because you don't watch football. I know how lucky are you. Exactly. And I think that's what a lot of the females in the new age sector are after is someone like you. Who is very strong, knows who knows himself, but is also very nurturing and caring. And because you are very connected to both your masculine mm. and feminine side, you have an understanding. You know, mm. you you have more interests. No offense to the males, because I'm. <laughs> this is just. It sounds like we're stereotyping, but we're not really. You don't really have much of an interest in sport or things like you actually have. A, a connection with females that are, that's what females are wanting and not mm. a lot of men have that but a lot of men do have that too they have that understanding of what the female wants as well yeah when I was younger I used to love footy I used to uh, sports stupid sports I just loved it martial arts and footy and cricket and tennis and mm. I wanted to be a, you know football legend and because I was a kid but as I grew up and I you know, got thrown into this new age sector mm. and I became more understanding of who I am and what I'm here to do on levels. Mm. It just all shifted and the sport, I mean, I still love sports and I still love all that because I'm, you know, I'm still doing weight training and I'm still doing bits and pieces, but not to a degree where if I go to this job, you know, somebody's yelling out, you know, ah, St Kilda, bloody thrash, blah, blah, you know, on the weekend. What did you think of that? And I'm like, um, <laughs> Yeah, I know it was, was excellent, wasn't it? But end of the day, it's just not my niche anymore. No. And I'm getting my parents for an example because they're a really good example. Mm. My dad loves footy, mm. absolutely loves footy, where you can't talk to him, especially when mm. Sydney is playing. If I try to call him, he doesn't lose his, like, lose his marbles because I'm interrupting, but I do like to try and call him sometimes, mm. you know. Uh, just to irritate him while the game is playing because he's so into the game where my mum is a complete opposite. So she probably needs a new age guy. Possibly. comes in strong, got the money. They can go out and do things together and go for a walk together and, yeah. Yeah, so that is a really good example of, I think, what a female is after. Someone that they can go out with, that they can share moments with, not someone who is going to sit on the chair. Yeah. And watch TV. Or work themselves to death. Yeah. And it's interesting how we change. We've gone from down that subject from Cherry 2000. Maybe that's the reason why you got. Yeah. That a that's lot exactly of why. A lot of people will be alone because of the differences. Yeah. Mm. That's exactly why I want to talk about this because it was going to go more into the depths mm. of the, the masculine feminine relationship and intimacy. And I really do feel 
that it's going to shift on massive levels if technology keeps going on there will be a need it's like for prostitutes there's mm. prostitution around it's there's there's a there's a need for that in society mm. and unfortunately us guys need that intimacy that connection that all that it's not unfortunate it's just how you guys well, are well yeah it's just yeah it's testosterone plays a part of it and mm. without that humanity wouldn't keep on reproducing as well yeah exactly it's all part of the machine mm. and i just yeah that's that's exactly why i want to talk about the different levels of because i'm just going to do the het- more of the heterosexual conversation here because i'm not really i don't know a lot about the the same sex yeah, yeah. relationships yeah. i've never had one no so I can't go into that. No, we can only talk about our own experiences. Yeah. 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 Not to say there's anything wrong with that because love, I see it as love's love. Yeah. And if you love somebody, love somebody. How the movie really portrayed the the sex bots and how then talking about like this pretty grounded tracker. Real woman. Real woman. Yeah. Just like change this guy's opinion yeah exactly who's been probably with the cherry 2000 for years and years and years doesn't know any better and found somebody that's real it's like wow it's like she's the she's got all the dimensions and all the color about her at any given minute Mm -hmm. where the cherry 2000 is pretty much just a couple of colors and that's it yeah is that a way is that somewhere where collective is gonna, the collective is gonna change or choose to have more of a, a connection with a, a machine. If you're so lonely, need a companion, and it's getting challenging to meet a real person, you got you're gonna have no choice but to try to find. It's a possibility because, like I said before when it's aimed mainly more at males Mm. i have seen i think we watched videos ages ago where the males don't feel comfortable enough to approach a woman or a Mm. female and the only way they feel like they they can be in a relationship with someone is with a sex bot or a companion bot or something along those lines or even prostitution as well because maybe they feel like they're not going to be judged Mm. and being judged is a big fear for people maybe that's what it is about as well Mm. Mm. also a lot of guys and a lot of older guys are going overseas to get filipino wives and asian wives or girlfriends because they're more attentive and they're more not a bot. I'm not going to say that, but... They're just more attentive, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. And more appreciative. Yeah. As well. Mm. Where the Western female, she knows what she wants. She's strong. She gets what she wants. Yeah. F the male type scenario. Mm. And, you know, bugger you, mate. And the guys are like... Because us guys are pretty basic. But it's... Really. In- it's interesting you say that because... In the 80s, the female was portrayed as a masculine energy Mm. with the big giant shoulder Mm, pads. That's true, yeah. We all, well not we because I was born in the 80s, but women had to, in a way, change their energy from very feminine to masculine. And I think that was to actually be at the same level as the masculine energy in the workforce. Uh, And because that's where the shoulder pads came in. And then the suits, the straight cut suits. So women didn't have much of a body shape anymore. It was very suit, man suit kind of style to be at the same level as a masculine in the workplace. Yeah, because females like, well, we need to get our power back. Yeah. We're just as good, if not better than the men. And so they had this, started to have this bit of a new power game with the male, female energy. And then going from that, but it's interesting where, and this might be a little bit of a touchy subject, so I'm going to try and word it in a way that's softer. A lot of females also, because you said that 
sometimes the female like the females are strong now they're like you know see you later but uh, buddy which is great you know i'm gonna be heading in this direction because yeah. this is my path this is what i know this is what i choose yeah but then at the same time a lot of women turn to a lot of women on a intimate level because they're needing mm. that softness which they don't realize that that's what they're needing yes that's so true mm. yeah yeah i've had i've known people who are had same sex relationships mm. and they just said look they're more on the same page they're more in tune of each other they're more because they're the same same yeah and that's what they're really needing yeah where it's it's with a man with a man it's more of a headbutt mm. and i feel that's probably where like maybe that's where the disconnection is when i'm going to use us an exa- as an example i i'm very much in my head mm. i'm very much i'm very i'm a lot better now but earlier in my years i was very much in my head when we first started going out i was always in my head and very little or well, not uh, not very little in my heart but i was always an overthinker yeah and a lot of females are now yeah a lot of females are overthinkers mm. And I used to joke that I used to be a man. Mm. But I, looking back on it, it probably wasn't the best thing to, to do because I was owning my masculine, yeah. but not owning my feminine until I met you. So I can give you an understanding of that. Yeah. So if you're with a very soft, soft um, man, mm. not in his personal power... The female, a lot of the time, will step up to be more masculine. Mm. So, therefore, the roles change from the masculine is the female and the male is the feminine. Mm. And I've seen this heaps. And what, when I was in class as a student, what we got taught to understand is that the female, which is the Xena, needs her counterpart, the Hercules. Yeah. It's like it needs to be a balanced match. Yeah. You can't have a, a Xena powerful woman you know being with i don't know what's an archetype for that i've got the i've got the image what's his name he's a peewee herman okay yeah peewee that's a good analogy <laughs> i just got him in my head she's gonna walk all over him yeah and just and just drag him around like a rag doll yeah so what i'm getting now is that women have stepped up a lot because yeah. they've had to yeah more into the masculine power I feel like a lot of women have lost a little bit of their feminine as well yeah. because society has pretty much pushed both male and female. You have to, I mean, women have to work. There's partners, you know, both working, need to bring in the money because the, you know, the bills need to be paid. You can't live off one income anymore. Yeah, which was done in the 50s, which is mainly masculine. 50s, 60s, yeah. 70s even. The female would stay home. She was the caregiver and looking after the kids yeah. and stuff like that. Where well, that's all changed now mm. over the last probably 20 years because, you know, both parties have to go out and, you know. Make money. Yeah, go yeah. out together and hunt their own dinosaurs. Actually, that's a really good analogy for it because back in, let's say, caveman days, it was in Australia, let's go for a good, mm. really good example, Aboriginal people, the females would be the gatherers of the berries yeah, and the widgety grubs and the men would go out hunting kangaroo and emu and go running. They would be the hunters yeah. while the females are the gatherers. Now, like you just said, both male and female have to go hunt. Yeah together yeah yeah and it's a really interesting you are right a if you're gonna have a xena type person female you need to have a hercules opposite women demand that now for for it to work out yeah. if you're gonna have a peewee herman type male then you need his opposite mm. which would i don't know who a female would name is for an opposite <laughs> Yeah. PM. <laughs> Interesting visual that one. But when I when we got together, I had a I had to learn a lot about myself and really tap into and with your help tap into more of my feminine energy 
and own more of my feminine energy again, not just my masculine. And the reason why you could do that, because I've become a very strong male. Exactly. Man. Yeah. And that's given you the opportunity to step back into the feminine again. Exactly. So you could become softer. Yeah. Well, I feel like we you've dated men who are like boys. Yeah. Not knowing themselves, still stepping into their manhood. I mean, when you're 20, I mean. I mean, of I mean, course. Yeah, hello. I mean, even you probably yeah. were like, oh, oh yeah. Who am, who am I? What am I going to do? Yeah. Yeah. But as you get older, if that. Um, man or your partner doesn't step up and a lot of guys will stay at the same for the rest of their lives mm. it's footy it's this it's that there's no and the, if the female is growing and moving which I feel like and developing fem- which I feel like females do that a lot yeah. quicker females have a, a higher degree of intelligence especially mm. emotional feeling intelligence mm. and so if you have a a 20 year old girl going up for a 20 year old boy, mm. even though they're the same age, he's still just eight years old. <laughs> Poor guy. But, that's how, but that's how it is. <laughs> I know you laugh, and people are going to probably want to kick the crap out of me <laughs> for saying that. No. no. Girls mature more faster than boys. That's yeah. why you find a lot of girls that will. If they're quite mature, and if, especially if they're old souls, they're going to want to attract somebody older because mm. an older guy has more maturity, more self-insurance, more stability. He's not like a rat bag. Mm. And the the young girl's like, well, you know, I've got a man here. He's knowing himself and I feel safer. And so it, that's how it also goes. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Full stop. <laughs> that's it. So going back to the movie, the movie, yeah. In a way, I'm getting that this is going to have to play out. If there's going to be more who has playing out with the agendas of climate change and more viruses, or just whatever it is they want to make up as they go to keep people locked down, mm. and you're really craving intimacy because intimacy, connection with each other, brings joy. It's it's healthy. It's it's really super important. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it helps with um, clearing up depression, and and the sex is really important as well because there's intimate connection. There's a stress release. And I was just getting a visual of the energy that people produce when they connect. Mm-hmm. Now imagine what would happen if a human was connecting with. A robot, mm-hmm. there wouldn't be that same energy produced. No, it would be only the human yes. that would have that that energy. I'm vis- I'm seeing it like this glow, like every human that connects with other humans on a heart space and in a joyous occasion. There's this massive white glow that's mm. produced. If you do that, if you split that up and human with a robot. It's the glow or the energy magnetism. I don't know. There's like there's a word for it or something along those lines. The energy that is produced is not as strong mm. and not as powerful as if it was a group of people coming together or even a couple coming together. Yeah. Mm. I'm getting also with the energy aspect that how they've introduced sex toys over many, yeah. many years. Yeah. So you've now got sex toys to help you out. Mm. And I'm thinking a lot of people have got like, you know, a lot of sex toys. Mm. I've not been to everybody's house, so (laughs) I don't know. But it's a big industry. Yeah, it is a big industry. And also I'm getting uh, tantra is quite big as well. Yeah. Because you're connecting and you're breathing and you're reconnecting with your hearts and your your soul and everything. Yeah. And I don't know, I'm going to, well, I need to share this, but... When you're doing missionary um, position with mm. your partner, yep. if you connect your heart and your mind, you can, what you can do is you can create this vortex of energy I have, around you both. Yeah, I have seen images of like an energy field. Yeah. Yep. And that also can play into manifestation as well because you're both working with the mind, the heart, mm. the sacral, genital area and the intention as well. So you can actually do... So that's how powerful connection is yeah. and sexual energy is. Yeah. You can actually start to manifest 
a lot of things being in that vibration together together as well exactly and that's i think that's where i got the visual form it was like all of a sudden i saw this massive glow of energy and then it just got reduced because people are if the sex bots or companion bots come in that beautiful glow would start to get reduced mm. Mm. I don't think that's handy. I don't think that's handy either because then that's where the separation comes from. And people might not be as strong. Yeah. The collective, the energy of the collective will die down. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not good. No. Stay connected, everyone, as much as you can. So the takeover of the sex bots. Just saying. I'm getting I'm getting your something that your soul group had mentioned is it was what did they say? They said something along the lines of we don't like to focus on things because sometimes you humans can create it without realizing it. Yeah. And I just got that as was discuss, as I was t- explaining the whole energy thing. It was like, oh, okay, maybe I but it we need it needed to be said and it's already said. Yeah, and that's why we're here to have this conversation. Mm. I feel it's an important conversation. Mm. It's a delicate conversation. It's a fun, quirky conversation. I feel that people will be interested in this conversation because mm. deep down there, there's going to be many people out there who want that physical connection. Yeah. That intimate connection. Yeah. And not just with a robot. And But it's not... We don't need to worry about it right now in this very moment. But the reason why we brought, we wanted to talk about this movie is because it's a possibility in the future. Well, if things keep on being pushed out the way they're being pushed out, mm. because there's a lot of money to be made, mm. like a lot of money, and this whole place runs on currency money, yeah, yeah and the more people who are alone and, I mean, you can only, I guess, watch naughty movies on your laptop for so long, can't you? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like you're going to want, even if it's a sex bot or a bot that can do your house chores, you know, give you some nookie, do your cooking, do your cleaning, look after your social media, do everything like that. You're going to prefer to have that than, you know, you and your laptop yeah, or the TV good. shows. That's a good point. Yeah, watching Gilligan's Island for the rest of your life or something. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's a good point. Because mm. we all need connection, even with machines. You know, you watch, you have ca- guys with their cars. It's like, oh, I'm working on my, you know, on the engine. Mm. And she's a beaut. And, you know, in a way, they've got this love connection with mm. this, this car and rebuilding it, which is lovely. Mm. But that's a machine at the end of the day. Mm, that's exactly it. And most, a lot of people would go and have fallen in love with something like that, for example, mm. because they don't have it within their own lives. Yeah, exactly. And again, that's where a lot of people, I think a lot of shy people do that as well. The ones that don't feel confident. Introverted people. The yeah. Introverted people. Yeah. They would rather have a connection with something that where they feel they won't be rejected pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Uh, thanks for the reminder. I think it's China or somewhere in the east, might be in the States as well, where you can get like, because AI is really big on the phone, mm. you can get like apps where there's a female or male and it's like you talk to it and she's your partner or your girlfriend and you, you can talk and she gives you... Wasn't that also in a show that we watched as well? Was that Black Mirror? I think it might have been. Mm. Where the... There was a couple, an actual couple, and the male died and the female was so distraught and there's this company that can remake him. He was human though, but they could remake his whole personality and him in a robot form. And they, she started off with like conversations on the phone or something. Because they took those. his personality and everything from his social media. Yeah, ex- that's right. Yeah. They did. And they they started having text messages and it sounded like him. And then they started having conversations, I think. And it really they really got his voice going. And so she ordered the robot. But in the end, she couldn't really... Do, she it wasn't right for her 
No, even, something was missing. Yeah, it was the person, like the actual personality, like the soul and well, like his soul. Yeah, yeah, that was the thing. And and he lived in the attic. For <laughs> I don't remember that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he lived in the attic. She tossed him up into the attic. <laughs> <laughs> Black Mirror is a really good. Oh, Black Mirror. There's meant to be another episode of that that's come out. It's. It's like a m- short stories in a movie length form or something along those what, lines. The things that could play out. That's how it's portrayed playing out. Yeah. In the future. If you get a chance to watch Black Mirror as well. I can guarantee you that most people that listen to this have listened to or watched Black Mirror. Yeah, it it is crazy. If you haven't, get on the first one that we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it is crazy. You're like, oh, because you can see it's starting to play out, especially now, 2023. A lot of stuff that they've done is playing out now on levels. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, this game keeps on getting more quirkier, just like this <laughs> 80s movie, Cherry 2000. <laughs> that movie, in a way, is be- it's more sane than what it is now, I think. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's going a bit far. Oh, come on, you got to love their, their <laughs> colourful shirts, that they, their flower <laughs> shirts they were wearing. <laughs> that's going a bit too far. Well, watch it and let us know <laughs> what you think. <laughs> Highly recommended. If you're interested in seeing a different perception, absolutely. If you want to see it because you're interested and it's very quirky, also watch it as well. Yeah. Like, just watch it. It's, it's funny. We did sit down and uh, have McDonald's watching it. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. It's our naughty night. <laughs> Stupid movies and junk food. The next one that we're going to watch is going to be really interesting. Mm. Mm. I know. Yeah, that one's going to be a lot more serious. Mm-hmm. Even though this is pretty serious, but, but we're betraying funny. it. We're betraying, you know, the future of humanity. It's pretty Everybody serious. dating bots. Yeah, that's it's pretty, pretty serious. It's pretty serious, but it, it, the movie was just funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's given a lightheartedness to it. Yeah, it's just very quirky, the movie. Mm. And the, the villains in the movie are just... I just don't know about them. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because it only made $14,000 and they spent $10 million on um, it. Yeah, because it's... Maybe got... it was a typo. Maybe. It maybe has it's... to be a typo. Yeah. Would have been maybe $14 million. It, You would... Yeah, that's what I... But it was one four comma zero zero zero. Yeah, it's fourteen. That's 14000 Yeah. It has to be a typo. It has to be. That's a big loss. Huge loss. From ten million to only fourteen thousand mm. in the eighties. Well, people that watch it can be the judge of that. It's like, yep, I can understand. I only made fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah, but if you were watching it back then, yeah, that's different. Mm. Now you'd be like, yeah, okay, we get it because mm. it's twenty twenty three. But in nineteen eighty eight, it would have been the highlight of the movie industry. Well, I don't know, but you know, it's a it's a new movie. It's based on future predictions. Yeah, or the future. I would have thought that people in 1988 would be very interested in seeing what the future was going to be like. Yeah, if you want to watch the future, you just watch The Simpsons. Oh, yes. The amount of predictions they have had is yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to make any predictions because I can, because I just don't want to put don't, it out there. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. Because I know there's going to be some stuff going to play out. Yeah, don't do it. I can give you dates and everything. Yeah, let's... Down to the day. No. But I'm not prepared because I'm like, no, they're going to take that and create that from that. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it. That That's why I, your soul group was saying, look, we're not going to focus on this thing because, you know, you, you guys can really run away with it. Yeah, because we're great at that. Yeah. Because we're creatives and we've got a, mad, a <laughs> massive imagination. Yeah. I know, mm. <laughs> which doesn't work in our favour a lot of the time. Not if it's going to be detrimental. Yeah, a lot mm. of the time it is. Mm. Yeah. And also the other thing I was getting about the feminine energy, I feel like that's why a lot of females, it's really interesting, um, I feel like that's why a lot of females are creative. Oh, that's, now I remember, because we were talking about how the fe- a lot of females, a lot of women had to step up and be at the same caliber as males in the business industry. And now a lot of females, even a lot of males, are stepping out of, what do they call it? What do they call it? The, 
whatever the business industry is into something more creative. I don't know. Okay, let's just say that a lot of people are stepping out of a left brain, a lot of business, a lot of analytical, a lot stepping of... Stepping more creative right brain. Stepping more into the creative right brain of either growing their own fruit or mm. farming or artwork or self-preservation. No, off-grid living. Yep. A lot of people are doing that now. Preppers. Yeah, but they... I can't remember the name of it. Why is that out of my brain? Because you're not allowed to put it out there. Because it might be helpful. It's just a word, though. Yeah, it's a helpful word. It might change the humanity forever. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people are stepping out of the business side of things and becoming more creative, more feminine. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because we need the we talk about the balance of the the dance of the male female energy, yeah. not just outside of ourselves, within ourselves. One of the examples I've got coming up now is we were at a festival we we're selling candles and artwork and stuff mm. like that and the lady opposite us she was making oils body oils mm. and they were beautiful they were you know pink and very feminine and she said that she actually left her corporate that's the word her corporate job to become more of her own business and produce more of the body oils the more feminine things the nurturing, pe- nurturing feminine yes yeah that's what I'll, that's the word corporate yeah yeah a lot of people i've met who became professional healers they've left their corporate jobs to mm. step more into that so that was another thing that the feminine energy is or not even the feminine energy the both male and female are stepping out of the corporate industry to have more of a work-life balance let's say mm. Mm. so with the we're talking about that mm. so for me to step into being a, a male healer mm. was a massive hoo-ha mm. massively hoo-ha one of the reasons was because i was a man mm. and then people thought i was gay it's like oh well, this bloke's got to be gay to be a healer mm. but the magic was because i had because I've, I believe that I've been a healer for many lifetimes, mm. many incarnations. So I've established an, a, a gift and an ability which I've brought through with me. And this time round, working on my masculine self, my, my He-Man, my Hercules self, the strength, the power, knowing myself, and bringing in the healer, nurturer aspect of self within the healing, that's why I've done really, really well over all the years because mm. and most of my clients are female yeah they are yes i get the occasional guy yeah but most guys like mate whatever wank yeah so i get a lot of yeah females that need that nurturing soft communication but they need that strong masculine male at the same time yeah and that's been that's the one big healing gift that i have is being able to have the strength of the man, yeah, but still have the soft feminine yeah. as well, and maybe that's the conclusion of it. That's what females want. Yeah, they, you all girls need that now more than ever before. Mm-hmm. Where a lot of guys, it's not their part to play to step into that, especially to be a healer, because every guy can be a healer, and that's why the separation of I'm going to talk about the new age sector here because mm. I can't talk about mainstream, mm. but I still feel that. Females still want that good communication. Because if you, I've talked to a lot of women, it's like, my, my husband or boyfriend, he just won't talk to me. Mm. He just he just doesn't say anything. Mm. He won't communicate how he's feeling. And he's like, well, I don't know how to. Because mm. it's being brought up as boys. Like, you know, you don't really share your feelings and your emotions. You, you keep it all to yourself. But females are really needing that communication because that brings in more intimacy yeah and sharing what you're feeling with mm-hmm. your partner and that's also what's lacking yeah with, exactly. in the relationship but with the the bot thing i think that's why it's very aimed at people who are introverts because of that whole communication gap with a bot they can have that communication gap without having to feel rejected yeah yeah and the interesting thing mm. that i noted that you pointed out that with females they want in that strong masculine or that also has that is in touch with their soft feminine mm. so both strong and both soft the men are also wanting a female who is soft 
and not so much of a head case. Yeah, and still strong and independent. Exactly. So realistically, male and female are really wanting each other. However, the communication might be the gap, the gap or the barrier that's going on. So I can give everybody the golden key to Ooh, a solution to this. Okay. So because we are both made up of the masculine and female energy within ourselves, yep. we need to do the alchemy work within mm -hmm. to balance out and work on our individual female and male within ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the, the female who's really strong maybe needs to reawaken her feminine and then vice versa for the male, you know, come if he's extremely feminine, needs to work on the masculine. Yep. And vice versa. Yeah. And with that incorporated, which I call alchemy, personal alchemy, you'll start to attract the right people to you mm -hmm. and the right energies to you. But if you don't do that work and you keep doing the same, same, you're going to get the same, same. Mm. And you're going to keep on getting the head budding. Mm. So it all starts with not outside of self, because the bot thing is outside of self. It's not going to solve anything. It's all going within to do the work within. Yeah. And there's heaps of things you can learn online and work on the feminine and the work masculine. On the masculine. Yeah. If you want to do the work. And both female and males need to do this. Yeah. And that's where the magic and that's where the higher consciousness comes in. Mm -hmm. That's where the higher communication, intimacy, everything comes in. Because mm -hmm. with us, We've both worked on, you've worked on your feminine, your masculine, vice versa. Mm -hmm. So we're more of a, a match. Yeah. Because we have more of a balance. Yeah. We're very blessed that we love doing the same things. Yeah. And I think that's also partly a small part of the key as well. Yes, because if I would just want to sit on the couch and just watch footy all weekend and drink, you know, shitloads of beer <laughs> and you want to do... I wanted to go out and have fun with you and... Do a podcast. Like, baby, let's do a podcast. Like, the fuck of that, mate. I want to sit and watch bloody AFL today. Yeah. So, yes, the inner work is very important. And also, I feel like being or having the same interests is also similar very... Similar interests, yeah. Or similar interests is very important yeah. as well. Because we're pretty unique. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that you have to have the exact same interest because no. i know couples that are completely opposite yeah and they they do they make it work yeah because they love each other so much mm -hmm. but i feel like maybe the similar interest like if you like boating you might meet someone who loves boating love too. boats as well and yeah. that way you can have a shared experience yeah and yeah. you know you you kind of tread in water and you might be able to figure yourself out and figure each other out on mm. this similar boating experience or mm. you know journey mm. yeah i love this has been a great topic mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it has been a really good topic yeah and i just need the the right movie or foundation of what's been playing out too because yeah. i've been really feeling this needing to share this yeah type well, of info well done baby mm. let's see if i could bring in my soul group and now yeah, hitting cool. over an hour <laughs> It just might be a little bit longer for everyone. That's okay, because we're going to be doing clips now. So We are. Yeah. That's going to be exciting. Just more means work for more. <laughs> I was about to say the same. Mm. just means more work for me. Yeah. <laughs> we need eight days a week and 30 hours in a day. Is that actually possible for us? No. Can we manifest eight days a week and 30 hours in a day? Mm. Well, if time doesn't exist. Yeah, so we need... Oh, we've got another tangent. <laughs> okay. Let's just talk to you, this old group. Okay, so asking for my true soul group to come through for open heart space wisdom true knowledge on this topic today. <sighs> yes, we're here. Just waiting for you to speak, Jason. This is a large, grand conversation topic that you are discussing today on your glorious Phoenix Awakened podcast. Magnificent conversation indeed. The foundation of watching Cherry 2000, the 1980s movie, and taking it to ultimate new levels 
of deep inner work of balancing your male and female energies out within yourselves to make a greater change through all of the collective humanity within your life and this planet, this game, this realm. Well done to you both. There is a future timeline which is playing out and which continues to be pushed and played out where there will be the robotics coming into play to keep, you could say, humanity busy, supported, nurtured, even down to intimacy, because you are all needing intimacy and connection connection with each other. But there are hidden agendas where these hidden agendas are pushing and would like to push more and more to separate humanity. And as you said before, Alison, the energy of two people falling in love and sharing their energy, their intimacy, their communication is a grand sphere of energy around them. And if you happen to achieve getting one of these, what you call sex bots, AI bots, the energy will start to dwindle. This is not good for the collective. And this is the power that the collective has together, connecting with intimacy laughter joy harmony all the colors spectrum of the rainbow this is your power so the moment the collective you all start to have companions which are machines this is the moment that you could say things will go downhill from there because humanity will start to become more like robots more controlled by robots, lose your personal power, your right to be human and intimate with each other and yourselves, start to becoming more left brain than interacting with your right magical side of yourself, the right brain, your heart and your soul, unity to all that there is. And the plan is to unite every one of you into the AI cloud to become all conscious bots. And if you all choose that, that will happen. So you need to choose differently and not give so much power away to this AI technology, especially when it comes to these robots. The robots, yes, will be helpful, a very helpful tool indeed, but they are not the end all of you all. They are not, let's rephrase this, they are not your saviours. Mm. Why is it you all need to be saved? This boggles us so much. Step into your power, people. Step into your sovereignty. Unite together more deeply and closely. Connect your hearts as one. Hey everyone, we are back. Unfortunately, we had to do a quick intermission while Jason was in the middle of channeling. That is because our camera overheated, which is not actually supposed to, but we feel, or I feel, that the energy in here gets so excitable and so big that sometimes the camera does actually overheat. Too that's, much energy. That's my perception. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but yeah. Too much energy. <laughs> so we do apologize for cutting the channeling short in the previous section. And I'm hoping that your soul group will be able to remember what they were trying to say as well. I know, it's always exciting, <laughs> isn't it? Okay, so that's... So, we're ready to go again, people. Yes, we are back again, getting back on track. It is important not to go too far outside of yourselves especially when it comes to companionship be your own companion be your own saviors humanity has a or the ability to go too far outside of yourselves we understand you all need lots of stimulation and fun and joy and you love your new toys and this is how the game is being played with all this technology coming out to the surface for all of you to play with, to have fun with. We would like to call this red flags. 
take a step back, bring yourselves back into balance, perhaps see yourselves more as the adult, not the child playing with new toys. This is an area that needs to be worked on at this time. And as you all would like to have life easier, remember you are all superheroes in your own game, all with this, you could say, technologies, superpowers within you all. You really do not need all of this technology outside of yourselves when you have it already within. So think about that one for a moment. Is there any questions, Alison? Yeah, I do have a question. My perception on the whole scenario that's played out in the movie is really about separating people. And I I got on a level that could it also be the introduction of separating people is easier to manage them as well. So the idea, the end game, you could say for one possible scenario is it for it is for everyone to be easily managed as time goes on because that they touched on the subject of what i said about people coming together and creating that big giant ball of energy and then i also got by having people separated and possibly having a companion robot where it halves the energy then in a way it's also easily managing that person because now they're more of a they're more conditioned to the robot and to being separate from everyone Mm -hmm. and where that might make them easily manageable this is true on many levels Alison because humanity will become reliant on this new AI technology And in many ways, you humans will do as you're told from your companion robot down to a point where the robot will tell you to jump and you will jump. Yet at the start, it will be the other way around, but as AI robots become more intelligent, more superior over time, you are going to be back in the slave role. And this is a potential timeline that you're all facing in the near future. We perceive it as this. Humanity keeping keeps going with giving your power away. You are quite happy to do so because we perceive you all on many levels is still children. This is not to put you down or make you lesser than. These are choices that you continue to make life can be easier more efficient but you're not always needing ai technology robots to do this for you you just need to change your processes change the way you are doing things but this is not the machine that keeps on reinforcing the separation and the giving the power away and keeping humanity as slaves in a fishbowl And the reason why we use the word fishbowl is you keep on looping and circling around the bowl with no place to go, lost in your own little worlds, not seeing the bigger picture that's playing out around you all, trapped in the fishbowl, swimming around and around and around, being fed fish food to keep you from being too hungry or to keep you from expanding into the ocean, the expansion of who you really are, keep you all limited, all dumbed down, keep you from being what you would call awakened into your true magnificence. Have we answered your question, Alison? Yes, you have. I do have another question as well. Previously, before the camera shut down, you mentioned uh, about you were very curious and concerned as to why humanity keeps giving their power away and why they need saving. However, it's the conditioning that humanity has had over who knows countless centuries, millennia, first of all, with galactic beings coming down as portraying as gods to be 
to have because I had newer technology humans here on this planet perceive them to be gods down to the religions as well so in a way unfortunately humanity has been portrayed and been programmed to always run outside themselves and yet the fascinating thing is that galactic beings or other entities or other souls come into this game to experience that here is in human form i know this is slightly going off topic of what we were discussing but they did bring up a, how they explained it it was always a it's kind of like a curiosity and a worry as to why human always humanity always goes outside of themselves and why they have to keep being rescued and saved quite simple that's your program that's how you're being programmed you're created for greatness but there's been much much tinkering along the way you could say dumbing down the machine as the robots now are quite dumbed down eventually they will be magnificent machines such as yourselves on so many levels but humanity will as you call the gods that did the same thing to humanity humanity will do the same thing to the machines so above so below so it's your job as source within yourselves to expand beyond that and take your power back and your sovereignty back not to allow this to happen to yourselves and this is again as we've said before in the individual game many will partake in the technologies it will be irresistible not to some say this is part of the new age part of the reset part of the golden age but the bigger picture if you look above it is not really it is more about in our perspective separation with yourselves and each other and this is where particular beings galactic arenas would like humanity because do not forget your governments are not running the show there are other forces beings and ai beings running the show the governments and your leaders are just puppets or messengers to make the changes on their behalf we keep on saying to you all it is your choice you make the choices that are right for you and whatever the choices that you are that you make will be the bigger picture outcome you could say it's like choose your own adventure book choose your own adventure and depending on your adventure and your choices within your book your script that will be the outcome does this help yes it does actually it helps a lot in the end it's just everyone's own experience really it is indeed it is indeed it is an individual game your inter individual lives but we say that together if you all choose a certain direction that's the way you will go and that's where also the separation can come in because there will be many that choose differently than the others mm. so you'll have humans you all choosing to be fascinated with ai technology robots sex robots machines doing everything for you helping supporting you and there will be the other group of humanity that will want to be more organic and be independent of technology and ai and take back their sovereignty and their rights as a human being so again it is everybody's choice to do what they feel is right for them but mm. they they you are all encouraged to go in a certain direction and it takes many you could say inner strength to choose differently and to create differently does that help yes it does thank you i had a question but it went oh yes i had a feeling you might have a question mm. yeah that's okay okay it might come back yeah it doesn't matter mm. Mm. okay so yeah th there's a there's a lot in all that yeah there was and it all comes back a lot i thought that was interesting because when they said the, the adventure book <laughs> i used to love that as a kid i i still love it i don't read it but choose your own adventure was great yeah and that's that's the experience you choose your own adventure choose your own experience but because we're in a 
we're part of the collective. Yeah. And it's like a, I'm just getting like the bees. Yeah. So when the queen moves, all the bees move. Yeah. And we are very similar in that. Yeah. So if everybody wants robots and companion robots and sex robots and machines to do everything, and everybody's put their hands up, yes, please. Well, that's the agenda that's going to play out. Exactly. And not everyone, but as long as it's a majority of the the agenda yeah. or the majority of humanity yeah. or the collective that go that agrees, then it'll still go. It'll still play out. Yeah. Mm. It's how we individually, you and I individually, navigate through that and it's the choices that we make as well. Yeah. So, because we use, we've got computers and we've got, you know, tech and stuff because what we are doing we're needing that mm. and we're enjoying that but and you you think I might get carried away <laughs> with technology <laughs> but I'm a great I feel like I'm in a great a uh, great balance of what's too far and what's not too far yeah and I, the only reason I feel like sometimes things go a little bit too crazy is purely because of my own personal experience yeah and that's one thing that's that's in you yeah it's just my own memories of another lifetime that I've can recall where it went too far. Yeah. Mm. And that was pretty much not good. No, it's never good when things go too far and I, I guess humanity loses their hum, humaneness. Mm. Humanness. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, okay, it's a it's a really big topic. I thought it was going to be big but not this big. Well, for me personally. We've touched on I said to you when in our intermission that we've touched on subjects that we haven't really spoken about before yes we talk a lot about connecting connectedness and separation mm. and it we all need to be connected and things along those lines but we have actually also touched on the subject of the female and male energies mm. and the movie was a really good example of unfortunately what does happen in the male energy here and how females are here as well. Unfortunately, females are a lot overthinkers. We overthink everything. Hmm. In a way, we become more masculine because we overthink everything. And in a way, the males, yes, they're still masculine, but because they're wanting more of the intimacy, the the sexual intimacy, it's kind of gone the opposite for them. They've become probably more of the female, if you look at it that way as well. Yeah. Yeah, mm. everything's out of whack, out of balance. Yeah, everything is out of balance. Yeah, and it's big. Oh. That's a huge soup on its own. Yeah, and to fix that, well, it's not our job to fix that. No. It's everybody else's job to fix that within themselves. Mm. So, in a way, what I'm getting is connection is amazing for us humans. We need connection. And also, we need connection with ourselves as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We need light. We need love. Yeah. All we need is love. All we need is love. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> mm. Okay. I'll see if there's one last little message. Yeah. And then we'll um, say well, goodbye. Yeah. Okay. Last message. Connection and choices is the best way to move forward. Keep connected, yes, keep in the love frequency. Keep connected to yourselves together. Be balanced within your male, female energies. Be balanced with your mind and your hearts. Keep being kind to each other. Stop the separation of each other and especially to yourself because if you're separate from yourself, then you're separate from outside of yourself, therefore separate from everybody else. Find a way to reconnect and realign within yourselves. It all starts within you. So this is the moral of the story. Everything starts within you. Everything ends with you. And we are appreciative for being here. Once again, sharing our perspective, our love, our knowledge and our wisdom. Until we chat again, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for keeping the room cool. Mm. It feels a bit cooler, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. They made a good point. It all starts with us starts with us and ends with us and i just got we all come into this game by ourselves mm. and we all leave this game by ourselves mm. Mm. so it really is all based on us yeah mm. yeah i keep on getting the movie they live in my head now 
It's all the programming. It and all is. The it very much is yeah. a lot of programming. Mm. Everything. And it's all in the ethers as well. You know, down to the script, that movie that we watched about an actual guy having his story being typed out by some. Oh, that's right. Energy. Machine. Machine. AI. Yeah, this computer. You know, everything is a script, everything's a program, everything, even down to our zodiac. It's yeah. a personality. Yeah. Mm. So we need to be able to change the script, change the movie that we see fit. But if a, lot of, if a majority of the characters in the game are happy to continue along this pathway... Then that's okay for them. Yeah, but not for everyone. No. So then that's the split. And I guess maybe at the moment, until humanity can come together, there may always be a split. Mm. Yeah, because it's, yeah. Because everyone yeah. is an individual and everyone has their own individual thinking. And their individual experiences. So it, some people might come in and say, come in this time around again, and well, either their script or they choose to, like, I need to go down the AI path. Yeah, exactly. And I need to have an a AI robot girlfriend to, to have, have that experience. Exactly. So in the end, poss- it might always there might always be a separation, but not to the point of where it's like individual, like mm. there's a barrier between yeah. you and the next person. Yeah. Oh, just getting something funny mm. going down the mountain gate in mm. the future. Let's say we're going to be living in this area forever. No. And everybody's like, geez, you've got a real girlfriend. Jeez, <laughs> how gay is that? <laughs> No, keep up of the keep up with the <laughs> you've got this new model just come out you need to get her now i'm getting back to the future where he goes into the future and there's there's the old um the old game and he had to like grab the gun and use the gun That's to right. shoot and the boys are going oh you have to use your hands Ugh. yeah yeah it's a bit like that mm. you got a real girl what She's real? Jeez. <laughs> it's so 2023. <laughs> okay, we better yeah, say goodbye because we could just continue on yeah, with this. Yeah, this has been a really interesting conversation. We just keep on <laughs> talking about stuff. This is what we do, everyone. <laughs> this is our daily yeah. life, literally. Yeah. 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 So much communication. It's ridiculous. <laughs> he cracks me up every single day. Yeah. Yeah, ditto. <laughs> well, let's finish up. All right, okay. We're gonna we're gonna go now. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We hope you gained some insight into mm. the movie Cherry Two Thousand, our perception and Jason Soul Group perception on the possibilities of what could play out. We're not going to put that out there. However, like we have all said here, it all starts with us and it all ends with us in the end. Yeah, well said. Mm. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening, watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Love and blessings, everyone. Bye. Stay united.